Pastor Zwanzulu, back in the SAT studio. It's wonderful to have you again. Yes, it's good and to it's, be here. Uh, it's always good to see you, and it's yeah. always amazing to know that uh, God is still at work in His church, ain't it? Yeah, no, He is. <laughs> it's good to be back here at SAT. Yeah, it's good to be with you, brother. The, the topic of discussion today is, is, a, is a bit of a controversial one, especially mm. in lockdown in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, some of the churches are of unfortunate. in They are not allowed to gather yes. uh, amongst 50 people. Some churches are totally and wholeheartedly closed. Yeah. The dynamics of church have changed. The way in which pastors, pastor churches have changed. And I think a, a legitimate question to ask is, after COVID realities, mm. church, why bother? Why do I need to go back to a physical building? Why do yeah. I need to go back to church? Uh, and you're a pastor of a church. Maybe yes. you can quickly tell people where you're from and what you do. Yeah, so I'm from Rosebank Union Church. I'm a pastor of discipleship there. Um, yeah, so we have, we have experienced you know, the different you know, lockdown levels as a church and we've adjusted uh, following what the government has given us. Um, so I think when we went into fifth, well, I think there was a time where it was a hard lockdown, so we had to do everything online. Yeah. And then when it moved to 50, we, we started creating watch parties and just brought people back and, you know, and we'd watch the service. We still, I think at that time, we still couldn't do the services because there was a whole lot of gazetted things there around, you know, um, cleaning the venues and making sure that people are not singing and, and all of that. So we just thought maybe for the 50, you know, we'd do watch parties. And then when it moved to, I think, 100, then we were able, I think it moved from 50 to 250. Yes. You know, so we were able to gather and, and it was just great, you know, great to, to be back with, with, uh, with the saints and, and worshiping God together. You know, not that we have not been, we had been during, you know, during lockdown. It's just that we're doing it online. But just th that in-person gathering, nothing can replace that. Absolutely. And it seems like there is two groups. Well, I might paint it all wrong. Let's paint yeah. it with a broad brush. But there's the group that says, you know what? Uh, I miss fellowship. Yeah. Uh, all the extroverts in the church says, I need flesh. I need to be amongst people. I yes. need to greet people. I need to see them. But then yeah. we've got a proportion of, of people in the church that says, well, with church online, why right. go back to church? Yeah. I can just sit in my living room and enjoy sure. church. Yeah. So with churches online, why go to church? Yeah. Well, I think, I think there's, um, there, there's more to church than just the, the preach, you know, which is what we're getting online. You know, there's the in-person, um, you know, micro interactions, exactly, mm. you know, which cannot be replaced, mm. you know, which... Which is why even the introverts have said during lockdown that's been the hardest thing. Even as much as you know, the first twenty-one days were like, wow, I get to breathe, you know, I get to be uh, at home. But nothing can replace the fellowship of believers. Absolutely. You know that you know contact with people. Uh, so church is more than just a sermon that is preached. I think that's why people should get back uh, when the opportunity uh, arises. You know, should get back to. Uh, An online church, I think, um, is not meant to replace the local church. Absolutely. You know, so I if we, if I can interrupt and ask, yeah. if we look at the church, why do I need as a church and as an individual fellowship? Yeah. Well, the Christian faith, the, one of the most beautiful things is that we are saved into a community of faith. You're not saved to be an island. Yeah, for sure. You know, you're not saved. You cannot grow. Uh, I believe without without people, that's how God has has, has wired us. Mm. We are built into community. Uh, he Himself is in community as the Godhead. Um, and you know, there's so many passages of Scripture. I can think of uh, one in Hebrews that says, you know, do not neglect meeting together. Yes. You know, we look into the church in Acts. You know, Acts mm. two forty two. Um, you know, there's this gathering of saints, the fellowship. You know, the that the, the saints were devoted to. So it's, you know, I think all of that point to, you know, the need for people to be together. You know, how can iron sharpen iron from a distance? Absolutely. You know. The one thing that I've seen with churches being in lockdown and everybody having to go online is we got to peer into and behind the scenes of some of our churches. Yes. The negative effect of that is that some of our congregants are now spoiled for choice. Yes. And if the church is maybe a little bit more technologically astute or a little mm. bit more technologically advanced, yes. it seems that people are a little bit more drawn to the navigation of the church, which can do it better online. Yeah. But really at its core, what makes a good church? Sure. 
I think what makes a good church, um, you know, I, again, I'm going to use Acts 2, 42 mm. to 47. I've, I've, I've studied that passage recently as I've been working through some core values for, for our small groups. And yes. I think what makes a good church is, you know, we see in Acts 2, 42, the, the believers, this is a new church, you know, um, they are devoted to the apostles' teaching. Yes. So they are devoted to God's word. They are devoted to fellowship. They are devoted to sharing of possessions as and when others have need. Um, you know, I think I think those things do make they, they give us a, a blueprint or they give us principles for what to look for in a good church. Absolutely. You know, so God's teaching very vital. You know, um, you know, fellowship of believers, breaking of bread together mm. as as a congregation. We see that all happening. Uh, you know, and this there's this movement of making disciples that we see erupt in acts which is carried out by the church absolutely you know uh so i'd say people should read that x 242 to 47 that's not only that's not the only passage that touches on it but that's a that's a great place to look at and pull out those principles that that will outline what what a healthy church should look like yeah, for you sure. know um i think w what you mentioned it, it we do see People are spoiled for choice, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with with so many churches online. But I think all of that should not replace the local church. No, you're right. The place that God has put you in, the you know, the 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 people that are shepherding you that He has put in your life, because you you can you can connect and watch a church in the U.S. But the again the things that make the church the church, the shepherding day to day shepherding, the small group connection. You're not going to get that. No, you're absolutely right. You know, so you're not going to get that. So I'd say we see this happening in Acts. We see mm -hmm. the church, they would gather, they would sit together, you know, in, in the temple courts and hear the teaching, but they'd also meet in their homes. They're gathering. There's, mm. there's an aspect of locality. Yeah, for sure. That, that cannot be replaced by any online environment. Track, any, exactly, any online yeah, platform, yeah. You know, something that has really stood out for me is during the lockdown and isolation, uh, you know, the definition of, of who is my brother and sister have changed a little mm. bit. How will you define that now during the lockdown? Who is really my brother and sister? I mean, I, I, we need to go back to how we defined it before because that mm. doesn't change. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, who is my neighbor? You know, uh, the people in my congregation, I think, again, the, the locality, of things that's my brother and sister the my neighbor physically is my brother and sister absolutely yeah. you know so it I, I don't think the lockdown changes those dynamics um you know people have been forced to be more in their homes but we we have technology which should be redeemed you know uh for good yeah for sure you know we see uh technology sometimes we we vilify it i think with 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 good reason but I think as the Church of God, we need to be redeeming that and using that again to continue uh, being a fellowship of believers, you know, uh, to love God, to love his people, you know, to love our neighbors, you know. And I think the neighbor, to me, my neighbor is my physical neighbor, is the person that I encounter uh, wherever that's my neighbor. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I, I don't think that changes, you know, uh, but I think the local church, I think, one of the things that, you know, lockdown maybe opened up was just how unconnected we were, even we thought, even though we thought we were connected as a church. Absolutely. You know, because there are some people that, you know, if you're not part of a particular clique within the church mm. or part of a group Absolutely. within the church, those people were isolated even though they belonged. In a community. You know, so I'd say like your neighbor, you know, look, at, look within the local church and reach out to those people. We have church databases now. Again, a beauty of, of technology. We have a database that you can look and call, you know, yeah. call people. Um, and I think that's, that for me would be loving your neighbor. Absolutely. Yeah. So, the, so the pastor's task is actually easier. You can do a Skype call with the whole family exactly. and really pastor that from that vantage point. Exactly, yeah. Or do a WhatsApp call. Do a WhatsApp call. <laughs> yeah. we, we spoil for choice there. Absolutely. You know? You're right. Do a yeah, WhatsApp so call. Yeah. Something has definitely changed in the way we do church. And yeah. uh, one of the things that I see, um, there was a, a local pastor that is very well known in South Africa, and he's calling for the church 
to defy the go you know the government and mm. to return to church sure. and when I listen to the plea I think when you look at the group the bigger context of why he's doing this is because there's a financial need yeah. the church needs to to pay salaries the church uh, needs yeah. in certain instances the church building have just been raised up uh, mm -hmm. pre-COVID and now that COVID is here we have to pay these bills and we have to pay this you yeah. know these properties should members of a church still financially support the church even though they are not going yeah the short answer is yes <laughs> uh, speaking as a pastor yeah yes, we should say yes please <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, you know again it goes back to the earlier comment about you know who has God placed mm. you know as your shepherd um, and I think what of love, even pre pre the pandemic, you'd you'd hear I, I'd listen to different places, and one of the disclaimers that they would give, uh, I can think of of one particular church uh, in in the U.S. They'd say this should be used not as a substitution for your local church. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the the push is towards your local church. Um, you know, use this as supplementary. You okay, know, um, and if you're benefiting from it, consider giving, but that doesn't replace your local church. I think, uh, I think so. Back even with it, with regards to the giving question, you know, uh, the work of the Lord is still is still going out. Mm -hmm. You know, irrespective of you know not not being in the physical walls of the church, but His mission. That's what we're supporting, right? Absolutely, we're supporting the mission. Of, of, of the Lord. The Lord has placed us on, on mission and he has called paid elders to be, you know, to be the ones leading the church uh, in the form of pastors. Uh, so the work of, of, of God should carry on. And I think we give, uh, you know, not out of obligation, but out of gratitude, mm. you know, for what God has done. And he's given us these gifts and these gifts are not ours. You know, we, we're passing them on so that others get to experience him. So um, the fact that you are yeah, in your home doesn't you know, negate the fact that you still need to give to your church. And I, I do understand from other pastors who, who are pushing for, for people to, to get back. If, if, if it's motivated purely from a financial, financial point of view, that there's a problem. I agree with you. There's a problem there because the Bible still calls us to, to submit to our authorities. Yeah. And it answers the next question I wanted to yeah. ask you on, yeah. you know, should I honor the government and uh, not go to church? Well, government's got the mandate, obviously, yeah. to take care of people that can't take care of themselves. So yeah. what options do they have but to say, please do not gather yeah. more than people, you know, so, yeah. so this virus spreads. Yeah. Um, so you will definitely say, you know, uh, people, uh, I hear the word persecuted mm. used quite often if people, you know, talk about the fact that they're not allowed to go back to church. Let's just be clear, that is not persecution. That's not persecution. <laughs> you need to be in a closed country, you know, that doesn't allow freedom of, of, of religion, religion to Absolutely. understand what persecution I is. I agree. This is not persecution. It's a question of saving lives. It's a question of wisdom. And uh, I think, uh, you know, honoring our authorities, our government, it's part of the household code. Yeah, you're right. You know, these are the instructions that are given to, to Christians on how to relate to others in society. You get the the code for you know for how you relate as a family so husband and wife mm -hmm. uh, children and their parents you know uh, church to their leaders um, and in government you know Paul writes about it in Romans you know he calls us to submit yeah, to our sure. authorities and and I mean the context that he was writing to there was hectic persecution absolutely to the Christians, yes yeah for sure but he still says submit you know, you read in First Timothy that comes out that whole idea of sure. submission to our authorities. Uh, you read about it in First Peter. Uh, you know, so it's it's all over Scripture. It's part of the household code. Is for us as Christians, how do we, you know, honor the government? How do we honor the authorities? You know, uh, honoring the authorities is part of honoring God. You know, mm. um, and so I, I'm of the view that. You know, the government is not persecuting Christians. In fact, it's trying to to stop the spread of the virus. And I think so. So the In most loving fairness. thing, exact, the most loving thing we can do as churches and believers is to honor and submit to the government. Absolutely. And so how yeah. can we help? Exactly. I yeah. agree. I agree. Well, you've mentioned previously that for a lot of pastoral ministries, you know, the, the role of the pastor during lockdown has changed. Yeah. Can you maybe 
quickly speak to us about how pastors can effectively pastor mm. during COVID realities. Yeah, I think I think the main the main thing that's been pronounced by this by this uh, pandemic has been you know relational connectivity or the lack of it. Yeah, you're right. You know, with people being isolated. Um, so the main I think the main thing that has stood out to me more than just pushing out content. Uh, on a Sunday or during the week or whatever content that, that churches are pushing out, it's picking up a phone and calling people, yeah, you're right. connecting with people and checking how they're doing, mm. you know, praying for people over the phone. That for me has been, you know, one of the ways um, our church has tried sort to love our community. Uh, and I think people have received that, you know, uh, beyond the... Um, the Sunday services, which have been great, and, and and everything else around it, but I think the the personal, the personal connection, you know, that aspect of fellowship, you know, though it's not in person, but it's meaningful when when somebody is calling you and saying, "My brother, how are you doing? You know, how can I pray for you? You know, and and hearing how people have been impacted by by this virus, and and, and you know. Their livelihoods have many people have lost work and all of that. So hearing that from the people and praying for them, uh, and even meeting some of the needs, uh, I think that's one of the most effective ways I think we can minister to people. Um, I don't think people need a lot more content. Yeah, you're right. oh, per se. Very well said. They need relational connectivity. Oh, that is key. You know, so I think that's that's the low lying sure. fruit that we shouldn't ignore. Yeah, that is, I think um, you should say it again so the audience can just hear that. I think that is that yeah. is really true. Yeah, definitely. We need relational connectivity, man, more than more than all the content, you know, that we can produce. And I think <coughs> as churches, we've definitely jumped on to pushing out more content, um, you know. And I, and I get where it's coming from, but I think, honestly, what people have needed is that phone call. Hey, how are you doing? Sure. Uh, yeah. Praying for people, uh, so I'd say let's take it back there, you know, as a starting Absolutely. point. Um, yeah. The next question I wanted to ask is: Should every pastor be on a social media platform and produce content? Mm. And um, I think I think this just relates so much to what you've just said. Yeah. Um, what's the intention? What is the heart? Exactly. Um, and yeah. there's maybe a, a little bit of an underlying pressure that come even from some of the the governmental structures within the church where where they want to police what the pastor is doing and they want to make yeah. sure that he, he's you know, doing his job. Well, he's doing his job, yeah. but he, he does what he's getting paid for because yeah. now he's not going out. He just yeah. sits at home all day and he's mm. just online and what. Well, well, yeah. I understand that concern, but mm. but really the heart is how's the pastor shepherding the flock? Yeah. And uh, what are some of the ways the church can be the church during the pandemic? Sure. I think, um, you know, I think I, I, I like your, your previous comment. I do think the motive you know, the motive behind the type of content that we push out. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and also I think for for the for the for the you know, ruling elders within the church to not police the pastors. And it's and, and I, I wanna argue that it's not only the pastor's role, he's it's not only limited to him to care for the flock. Mm -hmm. You know? The whole eldership should be. Well, that, that's the biblical model. Exactly. Acts, Acts 28. Exactly. Absolutely. The whole eldership should be shepherding, uh, the, flock. shepherding the flock. Absolutely. Agreed. Um, you know, um, yeah. So I, I do think th there are ways then in which we could, you know, still exercise being a church even mm. in this situation. I think for even lay members of the church to like find out, in, are there people in the church that have need? You know, what skills do I have that I can offer to the church in this season? Absolutely. You know, how can I encourage my pastor? How can I, you know, how can I encourage the, the elderly in my church, the single in my church, yes. those that, that are not, you know, uh, living with people? Uh, so I think I'm, I'm big on relationships, man. I think, <laughs> um, you know, not just because I'm a warm, fuzzy guy, but I, I do see Christ's model of, of, of doing ministry. Yeah, for sure. You know, he was with the people. He called his disciples to be with him and he was going to teach them how to fish for men. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, and so the model for ministry is relationship that we see in Christ. Absolutely. You know, he was not addressing things out of a vacuum. Mm. You know, he encounters the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and he's, he's speaking to her, you know, about things of the kingdom of heaven, but 
using the things that they're dealing with, the things that Absolutely. they're discussing. Yes, yes. You know, and so it's outside of relationship. I, I struggle to see how we can be the church. You know, so I, th I think mobilizing the church and in, in figuring out ways in which we could love one another. Again, the needs are different. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it could be in the form of I'm going to drop a meal, you know, at somebody's gate who's in dire need of food. Oh, shame. Yes. You know, uh, we're going to serve we can be the church that way. Yeah, for sure. You know, sure. Uh, we can be the church by calling people, you know, connecting with people. If people have the means to connect, you know, online and what have you. Um, so, but again, it's that won't be met yeah, outside sure. of relationships. I agree. I agree with you. That is, yeah. that is key. Especially with the Great Commission, how do we, how do we reach out to people creatively mm -hmm. during lockdown where we're not allowed to interact with other people? Sure. I, I, and this is this is a tough one, you know, no, it is. Uh, because you know, one pre pre the pandemic, people were not engaging in the Great Commission. One, yeah, you're right. You know, so we we can't also hide behind the pandemic that you know we can't. There's an issue with the heart there. Mm -hmm. There's no burden for the lost, and I'm not just saying it to guilt trip people, but I'm just saying. Like most, most church members are comfortable with just sitting with what they have. Yeah, you're right. And not taking it out there. So we need to address that, you know. But I think even, even now, here there are opportunities. We have neighbors who are, you know, who are questioning things about the faith, who are questioning control. You know, who has control? They realize I don't have control. Yeah, right. But we have the truth. Mm. We can tell people about the one who has control, who is in control of all of it. And that's God. You know, so there's an opportunity, you know, um, there's death all around us, you know, particularly in, in Gauteng with all the numbers going up, you know, in recent weeks. Like, how can we offer that support to people who are in dire need? How yeah, can sure. we bring the, the hope of the gospel? Again, let's utilize this technology that God has given us. Most people, you know, again, relatively, most people have access to a smartphone, uh, to a phone at least that has WhatsApp. And you can do a video call, you can do a WhatsApp call um, and check in. There's these neighborhood groups, yeah, yeah, you know, that, we, that have all sorts of people. But, you know, being, being the hands and feet of the gospel in my, na in my neighborhood in a tangible way um, could be one of the ways in which we can build relationships with people, which could lead to having conversations about the gospel. You know, I've, I've had the most... Um, maybe effective time of ministry during this time with with my neighbors, like physical neighbors, sure. you know, um, and because this has forced us to, one, get outside of, of our walls. You know, if you live in Joburg in the suburbs, you'd know that there are these high walls that divide people. Absolutely. You know, it's unlike the township. Not, the town I just need to say, not in Pennington, eh? <laughs> uh, everything in Kuzuri Natal is open. open right? and exactly. <laughs> and, and see, that's the beauty of... <laughs> You know, I think sometimes the township where, you know, there's low, low fences where you can see through. You can see everybody down Everybody, the block. and you can have a conversation, <laughs> you know. Yeah, sure. But, you know, in our neighborhood, we've, I, I saw so many people that I've never seen before, you know, that I've got to interact with. And, you know, uh, so I think we have so many opportunities, you know, and I, I, I do think we need to backtrack a bit from using the pandemic as, you know, this has stopped us from, uh, being, you know, being the people that are making disciples as commissioned yeah. by Christ. That has been a problem. It, it, it's, it's been on the decline, yeah, you yes. know, uh, I'd argue. Yeah. As a pastor, can you maybe venture just a little bit and, and, and let us know where do you think the church will be maybe in yeah. 2025, even of COVID realities? We do not know if this is going to end. Yeah. And when it's going to end, but yeah. but what are some of the the trends and some of the anticipations that you have that you pray about, yeah. especially if you speak about the future and COVID realities? Yeah, look, I'm I, I'm no expert in this area, um, but I can just look at the the data that's in front of us. Yeah. Church attendance has been on the decline. Oh, absolutely. You know, for absolutely. for many years, you know, um, people have have chosen to do recreational things uh, on the Lord's Day. You know. Mm. So that has been on the, and I mean, these are Christians. And so uh, I remember listening to a webinar um, by Kerry Newhoff, uh, one of the leadership guys. He's pastored a church in, in Canada before. 
uh, for many years and he interviews different you know leadership guys i remember just in one of those sessions he was talking about you know the the online sort of movement was shunned upon by so many yeah you're right before the con now everybody's a tele evangelist now is exactly <laughs> yeah. you know um and and he was just basically arguing to say there is a need to engage mm. people uh, we 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 i mean the fact is we are able to reach more people you know, outside of the walls of the church. Absolutely. Through online. You're right. You know, uh, I've had so many requests from people uh, wanting to join in our small groups at church. And one of the questions I've asked them, like, how did you, uh, were you coming to the church before? Yes. And, 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 you know, the ones that have requested have said, we heard from a friend about this church that was doing church online and we joined in. That's and I've, li I've loved what I've seen. Um, That's amazing. You know, and so I want to be a part. Uh, that is, yeah. it is incredible because um, I've even heard of some of my pastor friends that live in, um, well, I've got a pastor friend, he lives in Soweto, he pastors a church in Soweto, and yeah. he's very technologically advanced. Yeah. And he says he's, he's pastoring a couple in Mexico through right. this online experience. Yeah. So, so the limitations are taken off, and it yes. seems like the church is transcending. And, yeah. and maybe something which you mentioned last time is, Christ will build his church. He will. He will build his church. And I think one of the one of the highlights for us uh, at, at Rosebank has been the prayer meeting. So we would meet for prayer every Wednesday. Um, online. Online. Okay. And it's been the most attended prayer meetings ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually the prayer meetings are the great old uh, exactly. on a Wednesday. Yes. You know. But now it's it's been widely attended and in fact through those breakout rooms we've had some deeper connection with people, you know. Uh, and so we, now we're doing it once a month, uh, the last Wednesday of each month. And again, we just look forward to seeing people coming together and we're praying corporately and then we break out into rooms and we get to hear, you know, how people are actually doing and we pray over those things. That's amazing. Um, so I think that should stay. That should... I agree. You know, so I think I, I'm foreseeing a bit of a hybrid Mm, um, yes. thing going forward. Hybrid church. Hybrid I like church, that. exactly. So I think there are some things that we should keep that should stay. And I think, um, you know, we have led, you know, small groups in the church for many years. And, you know, people, they, they can't use now the excuse of, I'm traveling, I'm out of the country, I can't join in for that week. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you've, you've got, got access. If you've got your cell phone, you if can join. If you've got your cell phone, you can, you can join in. Absolutely. So those are some things that have come through in this season and we can do it you know yes it's you you're missing the that interaction but it's it's better than not being there absolutely at all so that connectivity um so i see i see it more of a growing trend that's probably how the church is going to look like um to the other things i don't know if people are going to flock back into the church mm. i mean we saw one of the things we were hopeful for was you know when we get to that 250 mark the church will be filled up to the brim but you know, people were not coming back all the way. Yeah, you're right. You know, there were some that were coming, there were some that were growing accustomed to the online, um, you know, uh, setting. So we just need to figure out, like, what's the reasoning behind that? Mm. Is it out of fear? Uh, will the fear of COVID linger longer? Or, you know, will, will people's comfortability be the order of the day, which has to be challenged, yeah, you you're know? Right. Um, but yeah, definitely the church is moving towards this hybrid hybrid church and which some it's got great benefits i agree i agree it, yeah. yeah the reach of the past is a lot easier and uh, yeah. you know you can effectively pastor through technology yeah. a question i had which maybe we can end with and then we will look at another question but was if i'm a member of a church and now i i actually realize that i want to join another church mm. how do i leave well what do I do with my previous church and what yeah. do I do with my current church, yeah. especially in an online environment? What yeah. would you say to congregation sure. members? I, I think still engage with your current church. I agree. Engage with them. Uh, I mean, that has happened in our congregation, you know, uh, and people have engaged and given their reasons and we've given the, bl the blessing, you know, mm. to go. And uh, But yeah, I'd say to people, engage, engage with the church, you know, uh, help the church know your reasons. It's actually quite fascinating because there are certain areas, especially um, we've got a missionary couple in Kenya and there's also pastors from that very same part that says, 
we don't have the royalty of internet or technology mm, to right. help during COVID realities. And I know in, mm. in certain areas, what they've done is, is they come together, but it's almost as if there is quite a large social distancing and the pastor yes. screams the sermon so everybody can hear it yeah. in the woods on a Sunday or something like that. But we, right. we do understand that there are some challenges to go, but we're not denying it, especially yes. when it comes to the church. But we also realize that this is, as you've described it, an opportunity to, mm. to bring forth this hybrid model in which we can, yeah. we can pastor well. Maybe what we can do is end off with, with just a word of encouragement to pastors. Mm. They, unfortunately, in some of our churches, I just spoke to, the, um, to somebody outside before this meeting of some churches that just did not change mm. with the reality of COVID. They just technologically inept because usually yeah. it's a very elderly pastor yes. or a pastor that's not really interested or have never been interested in technology. Sure. How will you encourage them and how will you also challenge them mm. you know, to grow in their understanding of this pandemic and church? Yeah, I, I do think, man, I, I mean, there are some churches that are under-resourced. Mm. Um, I do understand most of my views are, you know, are coming from a place of, of privilege in a, in a church that has the resources. So by no means am I shooting down, you know, just pastors that really have challenges and yeah, for sure. congregants that have challenges to connect. We still have a connectivity issue uh, in most in most townships. You know, it's just not the same. I mean, that is exposed even with uh, homeschooling, just a gap and in the inequalities there. Mm. So I, I do think, you know, I just want to encourage pastors, you know, to, to use what they have to the best of their abilities, um, and also for churches that are well off, to assist. Yeah, I agreed. To assist so that God's word, uh, again, will not be hindered. Mm. Um, I think this is an opportunity, I think, for, uh, for, for bigger churches that have the resources to, to assist and help and partner with other churches that are under-resourced and, and understanding. I mean, for some people, it's a question of just putting a w one gig of data, you know, it's now 85 rands. Now to a church that has the finances, they can do that yeah, for sure. and it helps. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And also for, you know, for, for pastors, maybe they want to do pre-recorded services. You know, there are churches that have the facilities, you know, for, for those churches that have those facilities to invite those people in, to say, hey, come in, record your service, stream it this way. Absolutely. So there's got to be a, 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 an aspect again of, sharing possessions as and when each person is in need. Mm. And, and, and I think churches should stop functioning in silos. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, um, and, and I think, so that would be the encouragement. And I think uh, mental health for, for pastors, I think that's it's key. That's very key. Uh, I think uh, pastors need to be talking to other pastors. Uh, right there now. should be people that are, you know, that have oversight and just helping them deal with the pressures, you know, mm. because in one sense we are frontline workers. You know, we are, you know, trying to assist people in a spiritual sense and we trying we need help ourselves. Yeah, I agree. You know, to do that. Uh, so I just say, man, like we, we've got to we've got to help each other as churches. Um, you know, and we know the churches around us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, yeah. Well Pastor Zwa, it's always so nice to have you here. Yeah. And uh, always so comforting to, to see a pastor's heart, especially in all of these things. Yeah. And um, maybe you can just let, in uh, while we end, let the, the viewers know where they can maybe contact you. Yeah. Um, do you have an email address? Yes, I do. Yeah. You? Yeah. People can reach me on zwai at ruc.org.za. Uh, that's zwai, Z W U A I, at ruc.org.za. And Let's talk. Let's let's see how we can help each other. Let's see That's how we amazing. can encourage each other. We are the body of Christ. We are not Amen. bodies of Christ. We are bodies of Christ. And so let's do this thing together. Uh, let's figure things out together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, maybe maybe what we can do is, this and, and just for this session especially, if you will end us off in prayer, yeah. uh, and we pray you know, for the church in South Africa, well, and globally as a whole, yes, yeah. you know, just that God will give us and grant us wisdom. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't mind at all. Yeah, let's pray. Father, we, we do thank you, Lord, that you are on your throne and that, Lord, you are not uh, shaken by all that is happening. Mm -hmm. um, God, that you, um, you are our refuge uh, in times of trouble, Lord, and you are our present help, God. And we just 
we, we want to remind ourselves of that truth, Lord, that our help only comes from you, Father. And so I pray, I pray, God, that you'd be gracious, uh, Lord, to, to your people. Uh, Father, would you use, uh, you know, the government, Lord, in, in just, you know, rolling out vaccines and, and figuring out ways in which they could help your people, God. And I pray that you'd mobilize us as a church, God, to, to see where the needs are and, and to assist uh, Father, I do pray for those that are sick uh, in this moment. I do pray that, Lord, you would uh, cause the medication that they are taking to work and restore their bodies. Uh, God, we do remember those that are grieving the loss of loved ones. Father, we, are, we know that you are close to the brokenhearted, to those, God, that are, that are needing comfort. You provide that comfort. And I pray that, Lord, you do that. And you'll be, um, yeah, Lord, you'll not be distant from people. And people would know your hand and fill your presence father so i pray god that uh god you would you would really give the health workers uh lord uh, who are needing energy who are needing strength god would you supply the strength they need yes, god Jesus. that um as they as they administer and serve those that are sick god i pray that you'd you'd help protect them as well god i pray for um yeah god i just pray against corruption in our country i pray lord that you would uh, raise up a generation of of leaders that is um, yeah, Lord that is geared towards helping people and not taking from people and so God we do lament that we do lament the fact that we do live in a country and in a world Lord largely that is driven by profit and what people can gain out of it and uh, we do pray for people Lord that will put their lives um, <clears throat> you know um, put people's lives before theirs and and figuring out how they could serve, Lord, the way Christ Jesus has served us by laying down his life. Um, so, Lord, I just bring all these requests and many other things, Lord, that, um, yeah, Lord, that are in our hearts, things that um, we don't know what to pray for, but, Lord, we know that your spirit knows and intercedes for us. Yes, Lord. So we pray these things, Lord, in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Amen. Pastor Zwa. It's always good to have you here. I know we'll have you back. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm looking forward and, uh, to that time. Thank you yeah. so much for spending time with us. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank